Hello, Cricketers, and thank you so much for joining me. Welcome back to my channel, uh, Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, Delanda, <laughs> and I'm showing you my very uh, quick and easy process. I think it's quick and easy. Maybe not quick, but definitely easy process for creating these hats. Um, this is the one that I created tonight in this tutorial. This is what the inside of it looks like. I'm very pleased with the final product. Um, you will need 65 pound cardstock or 80 pound cardstock. You will need glue. I use uh, tacky glue. Um, I thought I would use the Elmer's tape roll. It ended up not working for me. It has worked for me before, but tonight wasn't my night. Um, you will also need your Cricut Explore Air 2, or you can use your Cricut Maker. I did use the scoring tool, um, the one that uh, comes with, that you can purchase for the Explore Air 2. It looks like this, okay? And um, you will need the design. I use the file from SDG Cuts. I know that there are several files you can use. The one that I purchased and used for this tutorial is the one from SDG Cuts. So without further ado, um, if you haven't subscribed, this is the time. I don't even need to keep saying that, so you know what to do. Um, it, without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. Okay, I am in Cricut Design Space, and in today's tutorial, I will show you how to resize um, the baseball cap file. The one that I'm using is the one that I purchased from SVG Cuts. I know that there are multiple files um, for the baseball cap. Um, the one that I'm using is the one from SVG Cuts. So the first thing you'll need to do is upload the file, um, and I've already uploaded mine. When you get yours, make sure you're using the one that says baseball, entire baseball cap separated. And that's the one that I'm showing on the screen right now. Um, when you get it, you know that there are two options. You can, well, actually there are multiple options. If you cut it just the way that it is right now, you will come up with a very small baseball cap. And I learned that the hard way, um, the very first time that I made it. it <laughs> it's small, tiny, but mighty. So it came out really cute, but it was just really small. And I kept seeing all these big hats and I was wondering how are they getting there as big? And I just um, always like to do things my way after I see something that I like. So the process that I'm showing you is the way that worked for me. So you have you know, other options. The second option is if you're using eight and a half by 11 cardstock, the 65 pound cardstock, uh, which is very easy to find. You can find it at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, um, Walmart, Target, any of the local stores. Um, if you're using the eight and a half by 11 cardstock, there is one way to do it. Um, and I'll show you that. And if you're using the 12 by 12 cardstock, there's another way to do it. So once you have your file uploaded, the next thing that you should do or the one, the next thing that you can do is ungroup it. Okay, so now if these are all individual pieces. Um, what I did is I selected all, I just hit the select all button right here and I aligned it and I centered it, okay? One thing that I know that when I do that, um, all of these pieces, if I resize this, everything is resized together, okay? So um, if I keep it like that, all of my pieces will be, um, you know, configured to, to work together. So I know that the biggest piece of this file is the bottom layer of the cap. It is the part that um, is the, the base of the cap, okay? So I know that that piece if I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper, the biggest piece that, the biggest that piece should be is 10 and a half, okay? So I could just change that to 10.5 in my, the height of it to 10.5. So I know that when I change that to 10.5, I'm not going to touch this lock where I'm hovering here at the top, hovering, hovering, hovering. I'm not going to unlock it. All I did was change this height of it to 10.5. It automatically changes the width to 8.281. Okay, so you might want to write that down. 10.5 by 8.281. Okay, and that is the perfect size for your eight and a half by 11 um, card stock. 
okay? So that's one option. The second option, if you're using 12 by 12 cardstock, instead of changing this to 10.5 right here, you would change this to 11.5. Now notice when I changed it to 11.5, I still did not unlock it. You can tell that it's not, it's still locked. When I change this to 11.5, the width of it changes to 9.07. So if you're wondering what's the width for 12 by 12, there you go. 12 by 12, you would have 11.5 as your height and you would have 9.07 as your width. Now I am using eight and a half by 11 card stock, so I'm gonna go back to the 10 and a half um, size. Now that I'm back to my 10.5 size, the next thing that I will do is start to move this out and separate it from each other, separate the pieces. So I know that I have five pieces that will look like this. And if you notice on the screen, I'm looking in my the right layers panel, you can keep these just like this and you can just attach all of them, but I know that I want score lines on mine. So this top piece where it says basic cut, I don't want it to be a basic cut. I want this to be a score line. So I will go here to my top panel, click score. I will select the whole thing and I will attach it. Okay, so I'll go to the next piece. The next piece, I know I have a basic cut. I'm gonna to go to the top. I'm gonna to click score. I will select it and I will attach it. Next piece, it's a basic cut. I'm gonna go change it to a score and I will attach it. So now I have five pieces that are exactly the same. I have one more piece that looks like this, but it is a little bit different. Let me move this over because I want to make sure to you know, do all of my score lines, okay? This is the visor. Um, I can tell that it needs score lines. I want to change that to a score. I will select it and I will attach it. Okay, I have, this is the top little piece of the cap. This is one of the bottom layers. This is the inner layer. I have six like this. Now, instead of, you know, doing all of those score lines, I know that I need six of these. So I'm not going to score, 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 score. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna delete these. Okay, now I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna take that top piece. I'm going to score it. Okay. Select it. I'm going to attach it. And I know that I need six of them so I can duplicate this five more times. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I should have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they are all already scored and attached. This is the last piece that looks like this. This one is a little bit different because this is the piece that goes in the back of the hat. I am going to make my score line and I am going to attach it, okay? This red piece, I use this to personalize. The baseball piece, I did not use it at all. If you are making yours with a baseball theme, I recommend keeping this piece, otherwise you can delete it. I am going to delete it because my hat will not have a baseball theme. This is another base layer, and then this is the last base layer. Before I click make it, I will go ahead and add the other two pieces that will, that will help me personalize my cap, and then I will go back and double check all of my score lines to make sure they are attached where they should be attached. Okay, so I'm going to upload, I'm gonna click upload. I know that I want to use um, my Houston Rockets, um, logo. Um, okay, I want to use this. I'm going to insert it. Okay. And I know that I want it to be the same size as this. So I will resize it. So I will bring this down and I will resize it to fit right on top of this. Um, let me go back because I know I need to change this to white. Okay. And I'm going to put this right on top and I will select both pieces and I will flatten this, okay? 
And I also know that I want to, um, I might have it saved already. I don't. Okay. I am going to type in Houston Rockets. I have it typed in. I know that I want this to be red. The font that I'm using is called NBA Rockets. And I know that I want this to fit in here. Okay. So I am going to stretch it out a little bit. But I also know that I want to um, do an offset. 0.125 was where I wanted it. Okay. And I know that I want my offset to be that goldish color. Okay. And just like that. And I will also flatten this. And I know that I want it to fit in there. Okay. So now I have my two print and cut pieces. I'm going to go back and double check all of my attachments attach score basic okay okay it is attached okay just double checking each piece okay i am going to go ahead and click make it okay since i'm using eight and a half by eleven paper i know that i need to do a little bit of rearranging for my cuts I know that I need to move this over, okay? I know that this is fine, all of this is fine. These will not work right here. I need to move these. Um, so I'll have to move it to a new mat. I'll move it to this one. Um, and I will go back and I will move this. Move it to that one too. I know that I can get four of these on a mat. Okay, I'm gonna move that. Okay, and I need to move this. Okay. Okay, and with these, um, I know that I need to just kind of rearrange them now you don't have this issue if you're using the 12 by 12 paper you don't have to do any of this because the 12 by 12 paper will cover it okay let me move this i just move it to a new mat okay and i also need to move this a little bit weird but I just think it's better when it's like that so I will move that and this um, just move that over move that down this is fine number 10 number 11 okay all of my mats are ready I will start with this one first and show you what my mats look like and then I'll load and cut them Okay, I have all of my mats laid out. Don't judge me. I do have a lot of mats. <laughs> okay, so the top three pieces are the bottom layer. The black piece over there in the right, that is the inner inner layer. These three yellow pieces are the, the top of the hat. And the three pieces here are the um, sides plus the, the visor. Now I will load each mat and get them all cut out. I'll do that in a time lapse. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut out. I have um, six of these. One that is different because it has this piece in the 
um, middle. I have one visor. I have one that will serve as my um, inner layer. I have six of these. Um, and I also have um, three layers of this, okay? The one small piece, the piece that looks like this. I have my Elmer's tape runner. I have the um, original tacky glue. I have tape runner refills just in case I run out. And I also have the gel version of the tacky glue. I like this one because it dries fast. I dislike the fact that um, once you touch it, you kind of just mess up your hat. So what I've um, found or what I've tried is using a paintbrush. So I have my tacky glue and I have a thin paintbrush. I'm gonna put a little bit on this plate just in case I need to use it. Um, you can't see it, I don't know so you can see it. so that I'm not actually touching the glue. I recommend starting with these pieces first because once you accomplish these, um, you'll feel <laughs> a sense of accomplishment because once you get to these with the teeth, it almost becomes hammer time. And if you're in my group, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not in my group, then go to the video that is entitled 10 most, top 10 most frustra frustrating things about owning a cricket. And you will know exactly what hammer time is. So if you use the scoring tool, the scoring tool puts the lines and so you know exactly where to fold. So that's why mine are folding exactly the way I want them to. All right, for this, I will use um, glue because this part um, is fairly easy and it's okay. It's, I haven't ever, out of all the hats I've made, I haven't messed this part up at all. I guess because these little rectangular pieces are so big it's a little bit hard to mess these up just gonna glue them together side by side like that now once again the benefit of using this glue is that it does dry fast I'm going to do my best not to touch any glue at all because once you touch one piece, it just becomes a glue circus. Okay. So while those two pieces are drying, I'll glue two other pieces. This time I'll use this little tape thing. I like this. Just add a little pieces and attach them. Now this does give you a cleaner look. I like the way this looks. And there's no drying time. It's already dry once you put it together. Okay. So I'm coming back to my first two pieces. I know that I can I'm just gonna glue these all the way together. The last piece. So now the first piece should look like this. The folds at the bottom represent the bottom. So these should be um, 
there. Now for this, I did use three different colors and the reason I did that is because I want the top layer of the bill to be black and I want this bottom layer to be yellow. And so all three of these will be glued together. I will use the tacky glue for this. I'll glue the edges. Now I'm gonna glue all of that. I'm gonna glue this to this. This is gonna be my bottom layer. And let's just go with the tape. That's why I always have a backup. Let them get me all my tape. Stop cooperating. That's okay. So you will have three layers for your bottom piece. And the same thing I did before, if you wanna just clean it up a little bit. If it doesn't clean up well enough with the scissors, you can always try with your, um, exacto knife or your what is this a cricket oh, i forgot what it's called smart blade or something like that okay so now i have this is my bottom layer this is my my top layer the next thing is to glue this onto this okay so i am going to have to keep using my tacky glue because the other glue is not cooperating with me and I don't have time for drama. It's the summertime, I'm not doing drama.
So after you do that, the next piece is this. Um, and instead of gluing here, I'll put the glue here on these tabs. That covers that bottom layer. Okay. And this is the visor piece. What I've noticed about this piece is that it's not an exact um, perfect fit. Um, so when you do add your glue to it, make sure that you kind of slide it under here so that it fits as well as possible. Um, yeah. So, just do glue on the edges. Now to the teeth. Okay, with these, these are the reason that most people don't finish this project because these are very hard to put together. Um, I've tried multiple ways of um, putting my hat together with this. This is just, it's always proven to be the hardest part. So the first thing is you fold you know, you make folds on where the score lines are, or if you didn't use the scoring tool, you make your folds where the cuts are, okay? So I'll do that part first because once I get this all folded, I'll feel another sense of accomplishment the same way I felt when I did my bottom layer. So, since I'm having to use the glue, I, I will not use very much, but you're gonna just add glue to each one of these little uh, teeth. Um, and you definitely don't need a lot because the more glue you add, the more um, of a chance there is for like a mess on the inside of the cap and you don't want that, okay? And then you just kind of start working this together. So um, I, what I found is the best way to do it is to lay it down on a desk, similar to what I'm using here, and then just, you know, work it around. This paper, like I said, this is the same yellow paper as this right here, and it's the 80 pound card stock, so it's more stiff than the 65 pound card stock. Um, 
I like it because it's stiff, but it is definitely hard to maneuver. So if you're making your first hat and you, um, you know, you're not sure about how to do this, I would suggest using 65 pound cardstock. Okay. I definitely want this to be lined up neatly. Doesn't seem like it matters that much, but trust me, it does. Now I have to do that four more times plus one, so really five more times, okay? So I'll get the next piece. Add my glue. And once again, I'll work it around. I think this is my second time ever even touching this spatula because I don't use it. But it's handy. Oh yeah.
It should be a dome shape, not, should not have these gaps. So that right there, that is bothering me. So the last thing you have to do is put this piece on, okay? So I add glue here, and I'm gonna put it on the top, but I'm gonna reinforce it from the bottom. So that is the top, this is the bottom. Now the only thing I'll need to do is add my stickers that I printed out. So here's my finished product, here's my finished hat. I did do Houston Rockets, put the Rockets logo on the inside. Um, my hat is red on the bottom. Um, I did have a little error right here and I will try to work it work it out um but you get the gist of how to put the hat together and um resize the template to your needs hopefully this process has been helpful to you hopefully um you'll be able to you know personalize a hat before father's day if that's when you are trying to um finish this and yours comes out exactly the way you want it. I'm pleased with how this one came out. Um, thanks so much for joining me today and thanks for watching. Bye.